Have a look at this old typewriter keyboard. Now just imagine yourself typing the word typewriter using it. Notice anything strange? Apart from the fact that I really do need to get the machine cleaned up, your eye does not have to leave that second line as you type typewriter in your mind's eye. So what? Why are the letters all on one line and why does it matter? What I want to do in this short video is to show that the answers here can be more interesting than the questions. They tell stories about innovation and business as relevant today as when this keyboard was invented nearly 150 years ago. My name is Neil Kay and this is the second in a series of short videos in which I deal with some of the mysteries that have hung around the typewriter for about as long as the typewriter itself. This is a QWERTY keyboard. It takes its name from the first six letters in the letter row. You can see its design looks very similar to modern QWERTYs. But this particular keyboard is tacked onto one of the first typewriters ever made, a 19th century Remington, which is where the resemblance stops with anything we are used to nowadays. The first video in this series was on the origins of QWERTY. Its overall design reflected an ingenious solution that dealt with a major problem that was getting in the way of making a practical typewriter. But there is also another curious feature of the design that's attracted theories and arguments over the years. And that is, as we saw, you can type the word typewriter using just the top letter line on the keyboard and with the letters circled in red here. It would be nice if we could ask the inventor why the letters are arranged that way. This is Christopher Latham Scholes, the acknowledged inventor of the first commercially viable typewriter and QWERTY, and the dyspeptic looking guy overlooking Scholes is James Densmore, who played a major part in helping Scholes with its early development and later promotion. If he doesn't look too pleased with Scholl's progress here, well, that's because he really was. He was persistently goading Scholl's to improve and finish his work. But what about the issue we started with? Being able to type typewriter with just one line. One common argument is that Scholl's designed the keyboard so that a Remington salesman could easily type the word typewriter with just that one line. And so persuade, or con, potential buyers how easy it was to type with this new device. But is that a credible explanation? Here is one contemporary of Scholes who probably would have thought it was a brilliant idea, Thomas Edison. Edison was not just one of the greatest inventors of the 19th century, he'd actually looked at Scholes' invention in his early days and dismissed it as crude. He would almost certainly have thought that anything that helped cover up some of the device's deficiencies was a good idea. Because Edison was a showman almost as much as he was an inventor, he spent a great deal of his time and energy finding ways to promote his ideas to the wider public. Such as this public exhibit for a battery he had invented. The inventor as showman and the role of product demonstrations is now something we take for granted. For example, with a Steve Jobs demonstration at a product launch. And Elon Musk is another entrepreneur fond of product demonstrations. Here he is showing a model of his planned Starship but product demonstrations can be risky. When Musk first demonstrated his new Cybertruck, he had a steel ball thrown at its unbreakable glass window, and the window unfortunately broke, with immediate adverse impacts also on the company's share price and his net worth. So the motto here is, if you are going to have a product demonstration, make sure all the possible glitches are ironed out in advance. We have to remember that in the 1870s a typewriter like this was a strange new device. You can get a sense of the wonder and awe that such inventions could inspire with this cameo insert of William Austin Burt, demonstrating what's been credited as America's first typewriter some years before Scholes and Remington made their version a commercial proposition. In the 1870s, most people would never have had, had the chance to try a typewriter, and even those who were thinking of buying one would have had limited opportunity at best to practice on one. And before you laugh at me for one finger the attempt to spell typewriter, you can forget about touch typing. It would probably have been one or two fingers typing for those who were to try it out. The salesmen would have had more practice, but even for them they would still have been well up the learning curve as far as typing is concerned. If you know the letters are all going to be on one line, it makes it all the more easier. You just have to look left or right, no up or down complications. So for salesmen it certainly makes the whole process of demonstrating much easier. But what about the objections that the letter making a typewriter could have finished up on that line by chance? We can examine the likelihood of that happening with a simple experiment. 
Just think of this as a poor man's version of these TV lottery draws. In our case, we have two pots to draw from. We also have three rows of mosaic tiles to represent the keys and the letter rows of the QWERTY keyboard. There's a top row of ten white tiles, a second row of nine blue tiles, and a bottom row of seven green tiles. The pot on the top left has 26 Scrabble pieces, each with a different letter of the alphabet, while the tiles pot has 10 white tiles, 9 blue tiles and 7 green tiles to match the pattern of tiles on our mosaic keyboard. It is slightly different from the configuration of the original QWERTY keyboard in which the letter M was on the second row instead of the bottom, but it does not make a real difference to our intended experiment, which aims to find out the odds of the letters making up typewriter finishing up on the top letter line by chance. Lotteries pick random numbers for their events. What we shall do is pick a random letter and place it on the row indicated by a randomly drawn tile. There are seven different letters in the word typewriter as shown here. There are two occurrences of T, E and R, so we'll try some experiments. So here's the first trial. The first letter is W. That is in fact one of the letters in typewriter and it's paired with a blue tile, but that places it in the second row. So that trial fails. No prizes there. Okay, second trial, and the first letter out is J. Not one of our target seven letters. It's paired with a blue tile, which assigns it to the second row. Next letter is L. It's paired up with a blue tile again, which also assigns it to the second row. Doesn't matter where in the row we put it, it just matters which row. Third letter is Z, and it's paired up with a white tile, which means it goes to the top row. And the fourth letter is I, which is one of our target seven letters, and it's paired with a green, which shunts it down to the bottom row, and it means that this trial fails as well. You can try this for yourself to find out the chances of these seven letters just happening to fall in that top line by chance. Except that doing it that way would mean a very large number of trials. There is an easier way. We can use the laws of probability to find out the odds of the seven letters making up typewriter falling on that one row by chance. And the answer? A not point not 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 two probability. Or to put it another way, but one chance in 5,000. So is the argument that the letters landed there by chance wrong? Probably, very probably. The odds on it might be better than winning the lottery, but I still would not put my money on it. But if you're still not convinced, there is one thing left. There was a helpful visual guide that Ellie Remington Models provided on their front cover. So here you are, ma'am. This is a new writing machine just invented by Messrs. Scholes and Densmer of Milwaukee to make our lives easier. Shall I type something into it? What should I type? I know. Why not the name of the machine? You can see it clearly written on the front. It's called a typewriter.